today we are going to study ballistic galvanometer galvanometer galvanometers are instrument which are intended primarily to indicate the existence of current steady or transient in a circuit the construction of galvanometers is based on the interaction between coils carrying current and magnets these may be divided into two types first is moving magnet galvanometer in this type of galvanometer the current is passed through a fixed coil which produces a magnetic field under which a magnet moves second is moving coil galvanometer in this case the current is passed through a movable coil placed between the poles of a powerful magnet the coil swings under the action of a deflecting couple acting upon it now the ballistic galvanometer which you which we use in our labs is a suspended coil type of galvanometer in this type of galvanometer coil is suspended freely and the deflection of the coil is read using a mirror attached to it here we can see the inner view of ballistic galvanometer and a diagram for that in this type of galvanometer the coil is suspended freely and the deflection of the coil is read using a mirror attached to it it shows very distinct and interesting behavior as a deadbeat galvanometer a critically damped galvanometer and a ballistic galvanometer under different circuit conditions it consists of a narrow rectangular coil of many turns of fine insulated copper wire suspended so as to move freely in a narrow annular space between the pole pieces of a strong horseshoe magnet the pole pieces of magnet are hollowed out to make them cylindrically concave in shape this makes the magnetic field radial that is the field is always parallel to the plane of coil within the coil is fixed a cylinder of soft iron which serves to concentrate the lines of force in the gap thus making the field in the gap strong and practically uniform the coil is wound on a light frame which is of metal generally aluminium or of non conducting material bamboo ivory or ebonite according to as a deadbeat or a ballistic action is required the suspension is a fine rectangular strip of phosphorus bronze the upper end of which is attached to a rigid support which is also known as torsion head it also serves as one of the current leads to the coil the rectangular strip has very small torsional rigidity and hence the twist for a given couple is much greater and the stress on the material much less than the wire of a circular cross section it also offers a comparatively larger area for the dissipation of heat produced by the current connection to the other end of the coil is made by means of very light metal spring k attached to the bottom of the coil a small concave mirror is attached to the top of the coil this mirror generally has a radius of curvature equal to 1 meter the whole arrangement is enclosed in a case which is provided with the glass window in the front the bg is provided with the leveling screws at the base and a sprit level at the bottom rim to ensure the vertical orientation of the coil this is a diagram for lamp and scale arrangement this is lamp and ballistic galvanometer in the lab this is lamp and scale arrangement in the lab when there is no charge pass through coil the reflected image of the filament falls on the center of the scale while when charge passes then for angular displacement of the coil reflected image moves linearly on the scale when one micro coulomb charge passes through the coil of the bg it produces a deflection of 1 mm on the scale kept 1 meter away from the bg let n be the number of turns of the coil a the area of the coil and b the magnitude of uniform magnetic induction as produced by the cylindrical pole pieces of the horseshoe magnet the passes of charge through the galvanometer is equivalent to the passage of varying current for a certain short interval of time 
let i be the current in the coil at any instant the coil experience a couple due to horizontal and oppositely directed equal forces acting on the vertical sides the moment of this couple or the torque acting on the coil is given by tau n i b a the torque acting for a small time dt gives the coil an angular impulse which is torque into time equals to n i b a dt therefore f t be the total time for which the current flows through the coil the total angular impulse given to the coil is integration 0 to t n b a i d t that is equals to n b a q where integration 0 to t i d t equals to q the charge that has passed through the galvanometer this impulse produces angular momentum in the coil which rotates until the restoring couple of the suspension brings it to the rest the coil then swings back to its rest position as the suspension unwinds and due to its inertia overshoots and twists the suspension in the opposite direction a series of back and forth angular oscillation thus results the amplitude of oscillation keeps decreasing with time due to damping forces present let us assume that the coil begins to oscillate after the impulse is over let omega be the angular velocity at the start and i its moment of inertia about the axis of suspension then the angular momentum produced in the coil due to the angular impulses i omega that is i omega equals to n b a q the coil possesses a kinetic energy half i omega square at start if damping is absent then this energy is entirely used for doing work in twisting the suspension if c be the restoring couple per unit twist in the suspension then the couple for the twist theta is c theta the work done for an additional twist d theta is c theta d theta if the maximum twist is theta not then the work required is integration 0 to theta not c theta d theta and it is equals to half c theta not square equating it to the kinetic energy of the coil at start we get half i omega square equals to half c theta not square that gives i omega square equals to c theta not square now if t be the time period of oscillation of the coil we have t equals to 2 pi under root i over c and from this i equals to t square c upon 4 pi square on multiplying equation 3 and 4 we get i square omega square equals to t square c square theta not square upon 4 pi square and that gives i omega equals to t c theta not upon 2 pi now again comparing the equation 2 and 5 we get n b a q equals to t c theta not upon 2 pi and this gives q equals to t upon 2 pi dot c upon n b a theta not and this is equals to q equals to k theta not k equals to t upon 2 pi c upon n b a where k is known as ballistic constant now rewriting the equation 7 theta not upon q equals to 1 by k equals to 2 pi upon t n b a upon c and we can write it as q s equals to theta not upon q where q s is known as charge sensitivity and it can be written as charge sensitivity equals to deflection upon charge and it can be defined as deflection per unit charge i s equals to theta upon i equals to n b a upon c where i s is a current sensitivity and it can be written as current sensitivity equals to deflection upon current and it can be defined as deflection on the scale 
per unit current. Now, V is equals to I s upon R, where V s is a voltage sensitivity, and it can be written as voltage sensitivity equals to current sensitivity upon resistance, and it can be defined as deflection per unit voltage or current sensitivity divided by the resistance of the circuit. Equation of motion of coil of ballistic galvanometer. The equation of motion may be obtained. using the condition that under equilibrium the deflecting couple is equal to the sum of the restoring couple retarding couple and torsional couple hence i d square theta upon dt square plus delta d theta upon dt plus c theta equals to n b a i we must consider the equation for two intervals that is t is more than 0 and less than tau and t is more than tau less than infinity During the first of these intervals the coil acquires momentum due to impulse given to it by transit current it however is hardly deflected from its initial position because of the stipulation that the transit current flows during a very small time tau in comparison with the free period t of the instrument that is tau upon t is much much lesser than 1 considering the motion of the coil for t much much more than tau now i equals to 0 so that equation 1 turns to i d square theta upon dt square plus delta d theta upon dt plus c theta equals to 0 that gives d square theta upon dt square plus 2p d theta upon dt plus q square theta equals to 0 where 2p equals to delta upon i equals to 1 upon i bracket b plus small bracket n b a whole square upon r bracket closes and q square equals to c upon i. Equation two represents a damped harmonic motion. Let the solution of this equation be theta equals to a e bar alpha t. Then d theta by dt equals to a alpha e par alpha t and d square theta upon dt square equals to a alpha square e par alpha t. Putting the values in equation two, we get alpha square plus two p alpha plus q square equals to zero and alpha equals to minus p plus minus under root p square minus q square. The complete solution for theta is theta equals to a1 e power minus p plus under root p square minus q square t plus a2 e power minus p minus under root p square minus q square t. The quantity p square minus q square may be positive, zero, or negative, depending upon whether p is more than q, p is equal to q, or p is less than q. Let's take first case that is of dead beat when p is more than q we have two real values of alpha then solution of equation 2 is theta equals to a1 e power alpha 1 t plus a2 e power alpha 2 t the alpha 1 and alpha 2 are negative the deflection theta will go on decreasing with increasing time the motion is non oscillating or dead beat and the oscillation is said to be case to critical damping when p is equals to q the two values of alpha are equal to minus p and solution of equation 2 becomes theta equals to a1 plus a2 e power minus pt the coil after deflection comes to rest in minimum possible time and the galvanometer is said to be critically damped the motion of the coil is just oscillatory case 3 under damping or ballistic in this case p is less than q thus under root p square minus q square is complex and can be written as j omega where j equals to under root minus 1 and omega equals to q square minus p square then equation 4 can be written as theta equals to a1 e par minus p j omega t 
plus a to e power minus p minus j omega t or theta equals to e power minus p t bracket a1 e power j omega t plus a2 e power minus j omega t. Since theta is a real quantity, so a1 and a2 will be complex conjugates. Then solution for theta is theta equals to a e power minus p t cos omega t plus beta. The constants a and beta are determined from the initial conditions that is theta equals to 0 and d theta by dt equals to omega naught at t equals to 0. Applying this condition to equation 5, we get a cos beta equals to 0 minus p a cos beta minus omega a sin beta equals to omega naught or minus omega a sin beta equals to omega naught. From first condition of equation 6, we find that cos beta equals to 0. Since a is not 0, so beta will be pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 or so on. Because sin beta is a negative quantity, so beta equals to 3 pi by 2 and a equals to omega naught upon omega. Hence, equation 6 becomes theta equals to a e power minus p t cos omega t plus 3 pi by 2 or theta equals to a e power minus p t sin omega t or theta equals to omega naught upon omega e power minus p t sin omega t. Equation 7 shows that the behavior of the system is now damped harmonic and the system will oscillate at the frequency omega with the exponentially decreasing amplitude given by a e power minus p t. The time period t of these oscillations is given by t equals to 2 pi by omega equals to 2 pi under root q square minus p square. From the equation it is clear that for the galvanometer to be ballistic p should be as small as possible. Thank you.